Friday night. It's eight o'clock. That means it's in time for our Empower Hour. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, be sure to let us know in the comments. And um, we c I can see who's joining in. Um, and then that way, uh, we can have a nice conversation. Um, through the hour, we first of all look at our moan and move ons, and then we look at our wellness wins later in the hour, and then we look at um, our week ahead, any goals that we might have set, and um, we'll look at some empowering questions and um, some techniques to help us survive the week ahead. And feel free to ask any questions throughout the session. And um, yeah, we'll have a nice empowering hour. Good evening, guys. Great to see you all. So I've got the lovely Tasha with us, Catherine, Lauren, Jennifer, Julie. It was Julie's birthday this week. Happy birthday, Julie. Hope you had a lovely um, day. And well, and you, I saw that you do night shift, uh, did a night shift. So sleeping all day, but I hope you had a nice celebration when you did celebrate. Do you know, I'm just looking out the window, it's snowing. We, we've missed the, well, I say Basildon has missed the snow. Um, it snowed about 10 days ago, um, but not down my road, like not in my sort of area of Basildon. As I drove into the town, I was like, hold on, there's like a, a smidging of snow. Um, and every morning I've woke up when everyone else has had snow, um, we haven't had it, but there is a few flakes falling now. I'm sure not enough to have fun with it, though, which is a shame. I like proper snow. I like um, a, a good couple of feet of snow so I can build snowmen, because um, I am a big kid. So, um, it's great to have you all with us. Um, 13 of you have joined in at the moment. I know there are some people that watch and um, don't like to um, chat and that's absolutely fine so hello 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 to you two um hi mel mel's with us tonight as well right okay so let's go to mo move on i had a couple of anonymous ones so we'll talk about them tonight as well um and yeah just think of something that's really pissed you off this week um that we know we can't chat well we say we know we can't change. It would it 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 builds a rage in you, um, but we either can't change it or just the energy that it will suck out of us is too negative to hold on to. So we have to moan and just move on. So we let it go because that build up of negative energy, um, we can hold on to it. It can make us um it can affect our mental health it can actually affect our physical health as well so it's important that we do learn to just let things go or chip away at these things until they change so my moan and move on was the daily uh mail this week um i, I generally stay away from newspapers but growing up i was always sort of um, believed that newspapers were split into sort of your cheap rubbish tat and then stuff then certain other papers for sort of your more um, factual um, and then there's the finance papers so um, I always considered certain newspapers that you just know would you pick up and it'd be a fake story or it'd be blown all out of proportion so um when i read um a couple of articles this week from um certain newspapers um not just the the, the mail but other newspapers as well i was really surprised at the writing style um, that they use. Um, I, I didn't pick them up in the paper, I picked them up uh, as a newspaper, I picked them up um, on social media, like on Facebook. So I was really shocked at this, the, 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 the tone that they use. But like I always consider news, and I googled this in the week, to be information, to be um, 
a fact. Like, it should be fact. Um, and it should be unbiased. That That's my perception of what news should be. If I want to read a newspaper, I'd be looking for an unbiased um, representation of the facts. So, when I read um, some articles this week, I was really shocked at how scaremongering they are at the moment during especially during these times um and just that they put everything in such a negative stance uh, 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 and as i said it's scaremongering the, the language that they use now anyone that works with me um knows that i'm really hot on our language um our, our language can um can build our um can build our, our pathways in our head um to be sort of negative or positive um and i just think if we have an awareness about the language we use and i always use the um representation of you go and see an old auntie and you go oh how are how are you old auntie and, oh my hips hurt my arms hurt my this hurts that hurts and they go down a big long list of everything that's wrong and they're sitting in a chair and not making the most of life whereas you can go and see someone else that'll go oh well i've had a great day today because like, i've woke up and i've still got my vision or i've still got this and i've still got that and yes i've got aches and pains but i'm getting through it and there's just there'll be there's more positivity and and more effect of someone getting on with their life than the person that maybe might take the negative route and don't get me wrong it's really easy to get into these negative language and and have that absorbed into you into your mental health into your physical health you absorb your language so i'm i'm really hot on language so that's why when i saw these newspaper articles and to me they're as i said they're scaremongering people it's really um sad to see that yes we're in absolute dire times at the moment um we don't know what's happening tomorrow but do you know what although we're in these dire times we're still alive we're still doing well we might have days where we just are at a wit's end uh, and we might be struggling with family or with the people we live with or with loneliness but do you know what we're alive and at the moment we, we, we just have to reach out and talk to other people um and get off our chest what's sort of going on and um yeah so i do struggle with newspapers that are putting everything in such a negative with no idea of hope and i just think that um it's irresponsible especially this time of year as i said we're in these dire times we know this covid is the unknown but what we do know is everybody in the government and charities and key workers uh, and everyone is working behind the scenes bloody hard really hard uh, um to make a difference to our community and to to reach out and to be there for the community for what we need and all we have to do at the moment is stay home so i think the message is stay home take each day as it comes we don't know how it's going to unravel um and just know that all the people that uh that will make a difference to this in the long term are working hard as they can so that's my that's my very long moment move, move on so yes language um and particularly those as i said that are in a power to um make a difference uh to our country and our world um so any newspapers um that they should use an unbiased approach or at least leave an article with hey do you know what um we don't know when the schools are going to open um but reach out to your schools if you need help or reach out to your community if you need help because there are many people at the end of phones um looking to signpost people and help people as much as we can so 
So that was, sorry, my, my moan and move on. Um, Catherine's moan and move on is mild, oh, mild food poisoning. Like a thing from lunch on Friday that's nagging me all over the weekend. That's crappy. Um, sorry to hear that. Um, sending you love and wellness. Um, yeah. Um, I've had another um, one that is gossip. Gossip is a hard one, isn't it? Because, again, we can't control gossip. And um, it, it, certainly if it's about us, it can be really... You can either take it in and, and worry about what's been said and what people think, or you have to try and find the mindset is, oh, sorry for any younger viewers, but fuck them. Um, they've obviously got nothing better to talk about, and they'll... They'll take one and end up with 43 anyway. So just let them get on with it. Um, but it is hard when it's about you or your life. And um, But we know from these things generally that they pass. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're today's news, but you probably won't be tomorrow. Someone else will be. So, yes. Gossip is a is a moan and move on. Have I got any other moan and move on? I've got lovely Mark with us tonight as well. Uh, hoping that I'm well and I've had a great day. I have. I've done nothing. I've just chilled out and enjoyed my weekend. Uh, Christine's moan and move on is being on the receiving end of wind and stomach upset. Yeah, I can well imagine that that was joyous. Um, and Christine's um, moan and move on is also cold bedrooms because the window is open. Yeah, but it works. I bet you it works. Claire's moan and move on is school work that is impossible to help a child with. Strange things and people. Claire, absolutely. <laughs> Claire, I tell you what, I work in primary schools doing wellness. Um, and sometimes I go into a teacher's classroom, or quite often I go into teacher's classrooms. And um, I think they're called improper fractions, something like that. And um, back in 2020, early 2020, must have been maybe the February time, January, February time before lockdown, um, I was in with a fantastic teacher and she was teaching these improper fractions. And um, I said to her, can you do me a favour? Can you show me, uh, um, break it down again for me because I'm going to take the, the group of children that are really struggling to get this and I'm going to learn it with them. Um, and then that way I will sit with them and we'll work out a way to uh, to help them learn it. Do you know, by the end of the session, I'd got it, which was great. But the week that after I went back, I'd totally forgotten it. And um, I, just, I just can't retain it. There are just some things that teach children are, are, are taught that I'm just like, wow, I'm sure I've never used that as an adult. Um, so don't start beating yourself up when you get school working and you think, bloody hell, I, I don't understand this. I, it doesn't make you stupid. It just makes the curriculum stupid. That It's like, wow, Christine had me trying to create a worksheet of multiplying improper fractions today. My head hurt. Yeah, it's just, um, just, yeah. So don't, don't think, don't judge your intellect on what they're trying to teach children. They're trying, the curriculum is trying to teach children sometimes stuff that I don't think is, um, sorry, maths teachers, I know there's going to be a couple watching, but I, I just don't think that improper fractions is, is necessary for a seven, eight year old. So, but that's my, if the government wants to disagree with me on that, they can. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, hi, Wendy. Thanks for joining us. Um, if any math teachers would like to tell me where I would have used improper fractions without maybe knowing it um, in my life, I'd, I'd like to know. Because uh, when I say, when I teach children about fractions, I just teach them about cake. Because um, we can all remember what like one eighth is or how we share that out. Uh, Melanie says I think the curriculum is outdated absolutely Melanie I'd rather take the kids to a shop with a pound and tell them to 
buy um i don't know 50 pence worth of sweets and how much do they get back so <coughs> i'm more practical i'm more let's buy a cake and how many children in the class let's divide it by 32. <laughs> that's all for carla none for you no um but do, do you know what I mean? i'm just i'm more of a practical person but saying that i'm a kinesthetic learner which means i am a learner by doing um paul says we've decided to incorporate life skills for the kids throughout the day rather than sticking to rigid school timetable sitting at the, oh i think that's better paul if i run a school and one day i'd like to have a happy school um where we can have practical um and the life skills all embedded through the um through the sort of curriculum um to help children be able to cope with adulthood uh, and life basically uh, claire says curriculum is now rubbish life skills are important and government seems to forget this yes well well this moment move on is massively about the curriculum now sorry government but not sorry um but yeah I, I i think you're right i think what we're sometimes what we're teaching the children is just i mean have you seen the spellings for primary school I never got some of those spellings until I was in my 20s. And it's great that we're pushing children um, to have good English. I get that. But do you know what? Like, I just worry how much we push. And I just wonder what's realistic for a child um, and what we're sacrificing if we push them too, too, uh, too much. Um, my bigger thing, and I've said this to parents time and time again over the last 20 years, is you can get education at, every, at any time in your life. But to develop good mental health, you are definitely, it's something that goes through childhood, particularly teenage years. Um, and then onwards. So I just <laughs> Paul. What Paul wants is that. Am I the head of the revolution, Paul? <laughs> you gonna put me on the on the um, plank? So um, I'd I'd. Who wants to help me set up a happy school? That's what I've always wanted to do. So an alternate education for children, um, because I just think mental health uh, and the life skills are more important. Um, Although saying that, I remember um, back in the day when primary school was a lot more um, hands-on and I got given a block of wood and a chisel and I had to make a sculpture, a wooden sculpture. Um, so have I ever done that since? No, I haven't. Um, was it a life skill? Mm, when I got home, my mum put it on the fire. So uh, I suppose it was firewood. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just believe in fun. So uh, Claire's going to help me with the revolution. Excellent. I think Mel's in there as well. Um, yeah. So um, I think we should also, though, as adults or watching this, what do you do that is childlike now? Because children, actually, I love them. I think they're fantastic, especially when I can give them back to their parents. But if you look at their mental health generally, as a general rule, they're very happy. They're very... They live in the present, yeah? Then they generally don't worry about what's happening next week. They, um, they know what activities they like doing whether that's drawing playing running aggravating the brother or sisters um what activities do you do now that take you back to that place like how many of you have jumped in a muddy puddle in the last i don't know five years like or or, or better still got absolutely caked in mud uh, well, this is one of my favourites anyway. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. <laughs> like, I, years ago, um, was was on a fitness journey and I started doing, like, the mud runs and um, the assault courses and all of that. And I loved it. I really loved it. It really brought me back to when I was a kid and running through the farm and getting caked in mud and climbing over boughs of hay and... 
um, going on adventures around the woods. Like, how many of us as adults do that? And that's what I would suggest is that you learn something from your children as well. Because whilst you've got the opportunity at home to get them to educate them, that you let them re-educate you. And it's great to see that some of you have been jumping in puddles and getting involved with the kids. Um, Melanie says, I sing and dance around the living room with my teen and daughter. Brilliant. Uh, Claire says, we love sing and dance too. So that's excellent. But remember, educating your children isn't about, learning isn't about giving them knowledge. Knowledge is a two-way thing. Yeah, you learn best if it's a two-way thing. Yeah. The, the sharing and the so like that so you've got your child or your friend or doesn't got to be a young person could be an adult but it works better if it's meshed um paul says love going to the woods with the kids and walking around streams with leaves excellent brilliant <coughs> um when i was a kid my nan used to we used to go along the beach and pick up shells and then we would glue them to matchstick boxes and then paint them with nail varnish. Great activity. Um, Tasha says, I don't think I've grown up. We like to jump in puddles, dancing, loud, be silly, playing pranks. Brilliant. Yeah. So it, it's, it's great to show that age doesn't mean to say you have to be um, boring and, and old and can't do that anymore. I do see a lot of adults that don't embrace their child side um, and I think we should all aim to do that more um, <coughs> okay ah oh, hello beautiful so um, the lovely Jo Liners um, joined us as well so tonight I had a um, text message come in um, and it asked about children's behaviours why do they do things so psychology is made up of different schools of thought okay you have the behaviorists which means that behavior is learned you have the humanistics that there's a intrinsic um, human need to do things um, you have um, developmental where we where we're just growing and learning and forming attachments and stuff like that so why do children do things there's no clear-cut reason why a child will do thing do something but you generally children will either learn the behavior okay so the behavior is learnt. so they've seen someone else doing it and then they're copying it so that's learnt behavior Sometimes it's intrinsic that it's like a born with, um, say caring, um, might have a very caring nature, so they can be very generous. Sometimes it's because um, they've been conditioned um, to do something, so they know that it makes for a quieter life to comply or do, or do something. So th there are different schools of thought. <coughs> Um, so, uh, the person that texts me, we're going to have a bigger conversation, um, later, um, but just to, I thought I'd share that with all of you, that generally all of our behaviours are because of something, we're either born, born with this desire, we are, um, so that's intrinsic, we've either learnt that behaviour, so, or, um, or that our world has been conditioned, so we act that certain way. There are all different reasons. Um, can I just say, Paul, absolutely, 100% has that child side down to a T. <laughs> yes, um, that's great. <coughs> that's better than taking life too seriously. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, psychologically... People do things um, for all different reasons. It can be to try and get the attention um, of of their person that they've attached to. Um, can be all sorts. So, and that's the joy of psychology. There are so many different schools of thoughts out there, and 
different reasons. Um, yeah, but some of them have been are outdated, um, and some of them are still currently in 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 use today when analysing children's behaviour. So, um, right, um, wellness wins. Three things then, guys, please, that have been fabulous for you in the last week. And that could be something that's made you grow a bit, that you've learned, um, or you've stepped out of your comfort zone, so you've expanded what your, um, your, your, you've ultimately expanded your comfort zone. Um, it could be something that you're grateful for. Uh, it could be something that you're just um, really proud of and that you want to shout out to the world. So, um, there is nothing too small. As I've said week in, week out, it could be that you've brushed your teeth for five days out of seven. It could be that you've got a toe out of bed and put your feet on the floor and... Um, it's, it, we're not looking for people that have necessarily, oh, I've jumped out of a plane this week and I've done this and I've done that. Okay, we're here to support. Okay, we're here to um, share with you the struggles that you've been facing and the ones that you've overcome or, or you, you've, you've been, those moments of proud. Um, Catherine says, spent time on exercise in the mornings. Well done. That's very, um, very energetic of you in the mornings. Is that before work, Catherine? How has that changed your, like, how have you time slotted that in? Because that's the important thing we also like to know. Because then you might be inspiring others. Of like, how have you managed that? Are you getting up earlier? Are you just um more efficient or are you just running make it running late for the day now how have you done that um number two new dress in sale not sh not sure when to wear it though why not why not wear it on friday night have a in night date night um yeah get dressed up one night a week why not and then chinese on friday oh i love chinese very nice um uh, christine Freed up cupboard space. Ah, oh, isn't that that is such a joyous moment when we clear a cupboard out and then it's free of to. Um, I'm not sure about the biscuit cupboard though. I think that should just be neatly organised into sort of Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday. But yeah, freeing up cupboard space is definitely a wellness win. Um, finish binge binge series of Married at First Sight. Oh. Is what 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 country one? Because I had a chat with someone this week, and um, I know the producer apparently for the one that's been made made in Australia. So um, I say I know her, but I, I, I met her, and she was an awesome lady. But yeah, she's been working on that, um, helping out parents who had a power cut. Oh, that's an important wellness win to be there for others and help others. Sun, playing outside on the bikes. There we go, physical fitness. McDonald's on Friday. Food is always going to be there. Um, and schoolwork. Um, but that is for his bigger goals because he knows if he does his schoolwork, he wants to work with aeroplanes when he's older. And yeah, so getting the schoolwork done is important. Daughter cooked second batch of cookies. Nice. Now, last week, the daughter cooked, I think, about 96, 98 cookies. They were lovely because I had a personal delivery to my door last Monday morning. And that is one of my wellness wins this week. So they were delightful. Um, number two, had an English analysis project, which I enjoyed doing. Mm, very good. Number three, played a game over Zoom with grandparents. Very nice. Connection. Connection is so important to us and our wellness. Um, Cheryl meditated more to help my fuzzy brain. Cheryl, that's really good. Um, how did you find it? How, what barriers are you finding with meditation? Are you working through them? Um, because I think for about 10 years I st struggled with the thought of I'm not doing this right and then someone said to me that is the thought that you're going to have when doing meditation and I was like oh oh okay so um yeah let us know how you're doing with that 
Melanie ordered too many trampolines for daughters and I start bounce exercise tomorrow. Excellent. That's great. <laughs> bounce is great fun and fantastic for children as well. Um, <coughs> Lauren says, wellness wins. Plenty of exercise this week, including walking almost 15 miles across the week. That's amazing. <coughs> Sorry, I just have any drink. Um, <coughs> that's amazing. 15 miles. Uh, managed to keep my cool during a hectic week at home and take away Nando's last night. Oh, nice. Let me just have a sip. Um, well done, Lauren. Tasha says, me and the kids had a film and sleepover in the living room at the weekend. Excellent. Two had a tidy up. Brilliant. Three more baking. I love baking. Right. We watched the Australian one. Ah, so one of the producers, Anna, um, was um, out in LA with us, Catherine. So, yeah, apparently she's um, worked really hard on that. Um, Joe says, we've had a calmer week since taking the reins on our homeschooling. Brilliant, Joe. Paul um, made uh, me a he lovely, healthy dinner tonight. Excellent. And getting a start on my skull candy um candy skull gem picture brilliant some some personal time there as well to sit and do that so that's great we need that sometimes when we have everything going on around us that we can just concentrate on doing something claire says it's been a difficult week but i built a wardrobe bloody hell that's amazing well done claire proud of both my girls and how well they're coping with school work and my 15-year-old cooked dinner. That's brilliant. I like that. That is awesome. Um, some fantastic wellness wins there. So my three would be definitely getting a cookies delivery last Monday from the very kind Keen family. Number two would be... Um, I am my son's support bubble because um, he lives alone and so once a week I go around there and um, make sure that he's got everything he needs and this week he he made his little place up like a cinema and bought his mum her favourite drinks and um, dessert and we had um, a cinema night where we watched Wonder Woman. So, and I was pleased it was better than the reviews. I was expecting it to be really pants. Um, but it was okay. And it had some moments in it. I was like, oh, that's Wonder Woman. So, yeah, I enjoyed that. And my third wellness win was definitely catching up um, with friends this week on the phone. Had a good couple of um, phone calls that were like two hours long. So, yeah, it was great catching up with people. So, Victoria, hello. Thank you for joining us. So, have you got a wellness win to share, Victoria? Um, we were just discussing them. So, yeah. So, my, that's my wellness wins. Right. It stopped snowing. I, we literally had about eight flakes in my garden. So, definitely no snowmen tomorrow, unfortunately. But, yes. So, um, tomorrow... Um, Motivate Minds is obviously all back at work. Um, not physically, unfortunately. We are still um, working um, from home, the whole team, apart from um, two who go into the hub just to sort out this food bank. But that being said, you've still got your um, the session that we do with Joe, um, Cup of Kindness, on Wednesday. We've got a very special um, new programme starting this week on Monday night and Saturday morning where we're having PT. I will be joining in <laughs> for my sins. So um, that's Monday night on our Healthier You page um, and a Saturday morning on our Healthier You page. So I've put the link on the um, Empower Hour um, so if you haven't joined our page yet already, please do so. Um, and then we can get fitter together 
um, for 2021. Um, Joe runs that page, um, so um, and is supported by other team members and a fantastic um, tribe that are in there, share their food and their, their um, adventures. So yeah, it's a great place to help you on your journey. Now I am completely unfit and uh, struggle with my motivation and my fitness, so um, I start from scratch. So if anyone says, "Oh, but I've got to start right from the beginning," hey, that's where I'm at. Um, so there are people at all different levels, and we love them all. Um, and as Cheryl has just said, gutted, no sledging. Absolutely. See, that would have made a great way to get fit. A bit of sledging. Yeah, or even walking in the snow. God, that's hard work. Who remembers being sent to primary school when it snowed when we were younger? And I, the snow would be right up to your backside and you'd have to walk, like, miles. Um, these days, they just close the schools. Um, but all you'd get there and they'd go, oh, it's closed. The heating's not working. And you'd have to then walk all the way back. So it just taken me three hours to get here. So, yeah. Um, any questions? Anything that you guys would like to talk about before we go on to the last part of the session? Uh, yeah, can always do Vicky's yoga for beginners as well. She does it chair yoga. Um, yeah, <coughs> I'd still have a go, Cheryl. I really would. Um, chair yoga on Thursdays. Um, that will be on our main Facebook page and in our Healthier You page, uh, Healthier You group as well. Um, what else have we got going on? We've got the walks. We're still doing our walks outside um, for our customers. So um, you'll be put into pairs um, and we still do our walks. So that's great stuff. We've still got all of that going. Um, Paul says, I remember mum and us listening to the radio when it snowed in the hope that they would announce the school closed. <coughs> and Victoria says, I started work this week as a support worker for people with mental health. Oh, Vic, that's awesome. You have to let us know where. Maybe we can support people um, that you work with. So, yeah, be great. I am really missing, and I know this goes with all of you guys as well, I'm really missing seeing my friends and just their smiles. Um, it, it's hard, It's getting harder. Um, but I suppose the hope is where the da where daylight is getting earlier now. And I, I was shocked even to say, I was like, oh, it's half past four and it's still light. Um, that that because it's getting lighter that hopefully lockdown will end um will be ending soon sooner rather than obviously later and that we can go back to having people in our gardens again do you remember when we could still meet in the garden like joe would come round and we'd do a online session and yeah i just can't wait to get back to that I know normal is going to take a while, and that's fine. But if we could go back to how it was last summer, I'd be ever so grateful. So, um, Clacton on Sea. Oh, that's more. Well, my son is working in Harwich at the moment. Give a shout out to Eddie, everyone. Um, Eddie is working in care homes in Clacton and Harwich and um, Walton on the Nays, all of that area. So, yes. Um, right, okay, let's do, let's find an empowering question. Let's see what we've got. What do you look forward to in the summer? What are you looking forward to doing that just during the winter it's not the same? Or we haven't got the restriction to allow us to do it at the moment. I've got some round the wrong way.
what would you do if you had more time? If you had an extra four hours a day time, what would you do? What? Would, how would you spend it? Um, is our empowering question this week. Um, oh, Vicky did Morton on the Maze. Excellent. Field trip to go and see Vicky in the summer. That's what we'll do. Um, Cheryl said just the warm sun and seeing friends outside. Yeah, but we're not we're not far from there. I know like it's nearly the end of January. February has only got twenty eight days, so we can more or less wipe that out. Um, March, it's going to be a longer month, but hey, the sun will start warming us up. The buds will be back on the trees, so we, we it won't be long. April definitely, hopefully the sun will shine. May is always. 50-50, like with decent sunshine and get a tan. So, yeah, so, sort of your March and April, you can be out in the garden gardening. So, yeah, it won't be that long. Uh, Jenny is missing lots of people. I look forward to swimming and getting out more. Yeah, I'm, I'm a swimmer. Um, I love my swimming. I'm joining a new... Um, place when when lockdown allows us that i've never been to before um kingswood um i used to belong to another gym and actually it turned out really crap um but it had an outdoor swimming pool but at least um kingwood king kingswood has a nice indoor one so i'm looking forward to that i love swimming um and obviously we're all missing lots of people Catherine says, play more Xbox. This is what he'd do with his four hours. Oh, I don't think that's going to be allowed. Uh, daughter, sleep and bike. Yeah, sleep is really important and physical activity is brilliant. Me, cook properly and be with kids outside. That's a good one. Uh, Cheryl said, Kingswood is lovely, so friendly there. Yeah, so that's where I'm going to join. So if I had four hours more, that's where I, what I would spend my day doing, if I had four hours more. So, <coughs> what if, uh, used to be a member of Kingswood 15 years ago. Paul is very petite. I've heard it's small, but it is nice. And I think I would rather small over big and cold and, and yeah. So that's that's what I'm going for. Uh, and, and plus, I've got lots of um, friends that go there as well, so that'd be quite good. Lauren, I would love to spend it with friends. I miss them. Yes. A barbecue. Nice barbecue. That's what I, I want. Um, and, I, and I think when we are, and we will get the other side of this, whether it's the vaccines or whatever, um, a big, a big barbecue, like a big party barbecue, like 20, 30 people round, and I'd love, I can't wait to do that, to have a big old bash. So that'd be nice, and it will come. These months have been hard, really hard, um, but there will be another side, there always is. I like the Charlie, I think, McKenzie book at the moment. Um, I, I, I've talked about it before. But it's like, what we're in now is a storm. And it does pass. And it will pass. So, and at least we're all in it together. Yes, we have completely different. Some people have an umbrella. Some people have a house. Some people have all different tools um, during this time and some people will have, have nothing but ultimately we should all reach out and um, no matter what anyone's got is reach out and just talk because someone even in a brick built house can still struggle and through a storm yeah so we've just got to reach out to people and keep the conversation going and keep supporting people um, my daughter got the book it's beautiful it really is I can't recommend it enough uh, we had someone order a happy box this week, and I was like, oh, um, the price that they wanted, it didn't include it, and I was like, oh, they've got to have it during this time. Everyone's got to have a copy of that book. So, yes, it's um, just fantastic, fantastic book, and 
fantastic metaphors and just see this as a storm and we will get through it and no matter what um you've got um or haven't got it doesn't matter if we all reach out and all talk to one another and support one another and show one another a bit of love and kindness so that's our aim so four hours we would definitely all use it okay now i've got the lovely affirmation cards back out this week um these are the love and relationship ones so i'm gonna just have a quick um look for one for the next week for us So what guy what goals have you got for the week ahead guys what what plans have you got for the week ahead what are you doing absolutely cheryl one one step at a time is there anything that you're particularly working on towards your health towards your to your um health goals or have you got um your work goals or your life balance goals what have you got coming for the week ahead I've got one. Resilience. Sticks and stones may break my bones and con con unkind words can somehow drain every bit of joy and colour from my co once cosy life. But nothing can ever permanently damage the real me. I love myself, I cherish myself and I vow to remember that I'm always camped out in the depths of myself even when I don't feel like very much of myself i love that one resilience we all need that one at the moment okay things can go on that can really push our boundaries um but we mustn't let them permanently damage us yeah let's never let them permanently damage us just remember that you love yourself and you cherish yourself and to take time out for yourself as well yeah take time out for yourself as i said earlier when catherine said about nowhere to to, to doesn't know we're gonna have a new dress to wear her new dress put it on at home have a have a posh night at home or a date night at home with even if it's with yourself if you've got no one with you that's fine have a date night yourself get yourself freshened up um put a bit of perfume on aftershave on and just be kind to yourself claire likes that card uh claire says the week ahead is to take things daily and try not to stay indoors brilliant so take your walks claire that's great Cheryl's goals are for work. I'm doing a bit more training on th the Thrive approach. Oh, sounds good. And personal, just trying to get out in the air. That's good. Really good. Even if, right, even if you're not going out because you don't want to step out your front door, open a window. It might make your house cold, right, but a bit of fresh air can do amazing wonders, okay? Yes, it can maybe annoy the rest of your household, but fresh air and just stand at the window for five minutes. Um, I had my granddaughter in the week last week, my little two-year-old, and she walked from, she walked across the, um, the dining room and in it was the shadow of, well, not shadow, the, the sunshine from the window and it just caught her. And she looked at me and smiled because she felt the warmth of the sun. So I went and stood with her and I just I just sort of pulled her back. Let's, let's just enjoy this for a moment because she'd, she'd already sort of gone to um, disappear out of the sunshine. And just enjoy that for a moment, okay? So just take those moments. 
Um, Chris Dane's girl training children to flush toilets. <laughs> oh, that's surely just the boy. I'm not, sorry, boy. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, as soon as mine come home, um, whether that's for a, 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 a for Eddie, whether it's working between um, shifts, like his shifts. Um, because he does like a week here, a week there, um, or whether it's the other one that we'll visit, I'm sure I'll be going around checking the toilets after him still. So, um, yes. Um, okay, so let's find some techniques for the week ahead to help when we're having those wobble moments, so those anxious moments. I'm going to go back to my lovely book Simba says big hello from myself and everyone at time we promote your services every week to all that tune in you're doing an amazing job well thank you very much Simba very kind of you great to have you here with us um and and time okay so right let's find a card um oh found one called the big squeeze let's find out what this is and this can be our technique that we try for the week right page 20 where's my book page 20 we're just keeping it real that's what we like to do here when we open up the conversation around mental health and well-being we just keep it real you are on my sofa with me. I look rough because it's the weekend and I don't have to go out and I don't care. Um, and that's good. Right, okay. So the big squeeze says, nothing zaps anxiety like a workout. But if you can't get to the gym, which we can't, a good clench and release is a close second. It's an instant, anytime way to experience but expend a little nervous energy try the big squeeze next time you are losing the plot mm, okay so let's try this number one we clench our hands into fists clench your feet clench your bum clench your mouth anything that can be clenched must be clenched hard take a deep breath at the same time Hold it for a count of ten. Count slowly. Well, I can't do that and talk at the same time. And then unclench. Slowly unclench as you let out a deep breath right from your belly. We've talked about belly breathing before, haven't we? Um, notice how it feels as your muscles relax and you let your fingers and toes extend. And do a rerun if you need to. Do the whole thing again and again as many times as is helpful. There you go. So that's the big squeeze. You can give that a go over the coming week and see how you get on next week. Ah, oh, and you know, I've just, because I've used the torch on my phone, I've had to pick my phone up. You know, I told you about that amazing math teacher that was talking about um, improper fractions and different, in differential fractions, whatever they're called. She just texted to make sure I'm all right, bless her. Um, I see that there's some healthier you requests, so once I've finished here, I will be adding them. So, adding you to our lovely little group. I love our little groups on Facebook. So, if you haven't, if you haven't come to any of our groups before, they're very much like our sessions that we do in the hub. So it's split into. Um, our hashtag team motivated is just for connecting and general support and sharing the love and our wellness wins and our moan and move ons and all of that for the week and then our healthier you is all around nutrition um, and physical activity so it's all around the mind mouth muscle approach that we use at motivated minds um, and then we have um, what else do we have? We have our learning zone, which is called Be Well, the Be Well Tribe. So we're putting more and more content in there because um, that's our newest Facebook page, um, uh, Facebook group. 
and we're bringing everyone uh we'll bring everyone into that as well um i shared the other day some free first aid training if anyone wanted to do it it's in there um and we're writing our own content for um those for different subjects around mental health as well so um that will build over time um but that's about it really we're, we're just doing as much online stuff as we can to support you and just be here um you guys know that you can message us um throughout the week as well and where we can we will always support um paul has said to see more glorious sunrise from my doorstep with a coffee in hand oh that's a nice one i suppose that that's for the extra time what you'd like to do with your extra time um and yes as claire said uh waking up before midday that would um that would be handy as well so for some people they might be able to get that extra four hours so yes um paul great to see you with us though um and i saw your request for healthier you so we'll be adding you in there in just a moment um and we'll get our cycling um and our walking and eventually our running stuff all in there as we've said we've got yoga uh, with our beautiful vicky we've got personal training that starts tomorrow at eight o'clock so um i'll join you in there and you can hear me <gasps> as i um try and get my breath i will say we're doing it in rooms um i haven't used rooms before um but me and um ross tri trialed it out the other day and we can do rooms so yes it, it's good um i'm looking forward to the personal training um with you guys and we can take a bit of a journey on it and do it over the next 12 weeks and do a comparison of sort of before and uh, map our journey it'll be really nice and then when we can all get out we, we're we going to be fit enough to walk around a park and have a picnic in the park and do all sorts um jenny says i rang some friends this week as my challenge and plan to do more with this week oh jennifer so yeah last week we set a challenge to ring people and you rightly said that you was going to do it and you've done it brilliant and you can do more this week that's really great um, because there has been some sad news um, where people have felt there's no way out of their current situation and they've taken things into their own hands. And unfortunately, this time of year, um, <sighs> suicide rates do go up, let, let, let's face it. Like, oh, and you just never know. Someone said to me the other day, they said, um, but I want to do more. How can we prevent this from happening? How can we? Do you know what? I don't know how we can prevent it from happening um, other than reaching out. <coughs> Sorry. Just reaching out. And the difference that we're making, sometimes we don't know. Um, but I would like to think that we're doing our best. And if anyone um, really does need support, then we will support them. We will signpost them to other agencies as well that can support them. But there is nothing that can't be um, moved on from. So no matter what barriers, whether it's debt, whether it's breakups, whether it's just the way you feel they life does ultimately move on that's what my situations have taught me over the years and i just think it's really important that us um as warriors that we keep reaching out to others we we talk about our stories we say that you know what i feel shit and that's okay it's okay to feel shit um and it's okay to really struggle with getting out the door or falling into a depression or just use your language um and just reach out to others and uh, and encourage them to talk about how they feel too and if, if they can't talk to you then then there are other agencies out there and, and professionals that they can talk to 
So I think that's just our message for the week, really. It's just keep talking. Yeah, keep picking up that phone. Keep posting stuff that's positive with our positive language and um, being kind to ourselves. And on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you all and wish you a fantastic week ahead and um, just make the most of, of every minute that you've got. Um, and if you are really struggling, that just be kind to yourself. Alright my lovelies, take care and I'll see you next Sunday at 8 o'clock for your Empower Hour.